Hello everybody, it's Dwayne down in the cellar of the Roberto Clemente Museum. Um, and you know, we have Engine House 25 wines down here. Hopefully you got, get your glasses, have them filled, and make sure you have three glasses. Um, and that way we're not going back and forth. Um, but first we wanted to, to give a shout out, you know, uh, Pittsburgh Unite, the, the Pittsburgh Unite box here that you're getting is a pretty cool thing. Um, and the money we're gonna raise is going to the Women's Center and Shelter here in Pittsburgh. Um, and, you know, it was all because of small businesses and nonprofits kind of joining hands and, and help them with this. And we kicked in from the, uh, the Clemente Museum is donating the uh, Clemente bottle. Won't tell you what's in there, um, but it's a, it's a special one. So let's go and talk about the wines a little bit and get you thinking about that. Um, and you know, we've got the three different ones, the two reds, you could mark them with a Sharpie or something so you don't kind of mix them up. Because what I do is I go through once and then I go back through and taste again. Um, and so let's start with the, the first one, the white. You can look at it even just if you put a, uh, anything light in color, a piece of white paper or something, the color of this is, is, is not very yellow. It's not very straw colored. Um, it's a uh, nice, clean, crystal clear wine. Um, first thing to do is give it a nice swirl. I try to warm it up a little bit as we're going. And uh, this one has a beautiful bouquet, a nice grassy nose on it. We're gonna call it the grassy nose. Um, and uh, it's got a little bit of dried apricots. If you can smell a little bit of apricots on this bugger here. And it's pretty traditional for what it is. It's gonna line right up. Um, the thing for me, I wish it was just a little on the sweet side. It's very, it's very dry, um, but it's got a really nice taste. So let's have a little taste of this and we'll get things started. That's where you pick up that, the uh, dried apricots right there. Um, and a little bit of, it makes you pucker just a little bit because it's so dry, but it's nice. And a lot of people that don't like sweet, this is your jam right here, this is your wine. Um, so this one's actually really nice, easy drinking, good place to start, nice progression here. We go from, from this white to this red. Um, this red for us right here, let's go to number two. This red for us, beautiful color. Um, big seller for us right here. This is a, a fan favorite. A lot of people, when I, when I tell you what this is, you might not know this grape. Um, so there's a little hint right there. So I'll drop some little hints as we go. But there's the first one right there. This is not super common, but for us, it's, it's super good. Everybody's been enjoying this one. Um, let's have a little, a little uh, nose on this one is... It's got a little bit of uh, maybe bell pepper, which is all another big, there's another big hint right there. If you're scrolling through, you could search what usually has a bell pepper smell. This one's pre pretty traditional for what it is. Um, it's got a little bit of oak. This, uh, these two reds both came out of French oak barrels, which is gonna have a little hint of vanilla. This one definitely has that. Um, and maybe even a little coffee on that. Yeah, that one there is just downright yummy. Easy drinking, very smooth in the middle. It's not, it's dry. It's technically bone dry, but it doesn't make you pucker at all. It's got some nice, nice fruit on the front of this one um, and then finishes dry. So it's got kind of everything that you, you want in a red wine. It's got a nice beginning, middle and ending. Um, and it's just nice, easy drinking. Pretty middle of the road on alcohol. It's probably about 14% for reds. That's, you know, that's, it's not too bad. Um, so this one just goes down very smooth. I could drink that one all night right there. That one's good. Um, let's go to number three. We've been making this here for, for many years. One of the first wine, first wines I've ever made by myself back in 1996 or 97. Pretty common grape. This was more common than the number two wine. It has that hint of vanilla on the nose. Um, and this one's, this one's pretty complex, definitely full body. This one has a lot going on. Um, here again, a little cold. I'm down in the cellar. It's about 58 degrees in here. It's a little chilly, um, but it's kind of nice 
temperature for drinking reds. Um, whites, you want them around 40, 45 degrees. Um, this one here though, pretty uh, pretty full body, pretty pretty much what, if Mario Lemieux was sitting here drinking wine with me right now, this is what he would want. Um, it's pretty traditional, big red, full body wine. Um, it's hard to talk about it and not tell you what it is. Um, but this is, uh, it's got some coffee going on in there, maybe some, some dark fruit, maybe like a dark black currant or something. Um, this is this is nice and smooth as well. We've been blessed. Um, this has been one of the, the big hitters for us here through the years at the uh, in the winery and helping the Clementi Museum. So this is a this is a doozy. So um, hopefully you've had a good you know a little bit of time to to taste. Maybe you're going back and trying some of the good bread and salami and and uh, nibbles that you have in the box. Um, and I'm kind of going fast because you probably are like, ah, I don't want to hear this guy talk. I just want to hear what they are. Uh, but maybe let's go back one more time and think about these for just a second. And then I'll tell you what they are. Um, here again, this one here is pretty much exactly what it should be. Maybe it's a little drier. Um, hopefully you guys are going to agree that it's, you know, it's spot on. But I wish it just had a little bit of fruit left in the front of this one. Um, the dried apricots instead of just straight apricots will, will, will show you that it's just a little drier, but it's got a beautiful little taste. And nice, nice on the palate, nice going down. Everything's pretty, there's nothing negative about any of these wines. I picked three wines that I think everybody would enjoy. You know, we have a couple crazy wines that have got maybe this one's kind of bitter and this one's too sweet. And this one, you know, there's some that are, you know, here and there, but th these ones are kind of right in the middle, all easy drinkers. Um, let's go to number two. Hopefully you guys, somebody's gonna have a guess on this one. This one's gonna be tricky. I'll give you another, another hint. This is not from North America. This one is. So there's a couple hints right there. Um, Number three, though, this is uh, this is one here that you could uh, drink anytime. This one's easy going down. It's very complex, and I don't know anybody who knows me. I like it oaky. None of these are too oaky. These are definitely not. Um, this one here has been in oak. This was in oak three and a half years, and I don't think it comes across as too oaky. The nice thing is when it finishes in a French barrel, it leaves you with that vanilla note. So let's go and I'll do a little unveiling and that way you guys can talk some unk yourself and, uh, and uh, argue and say, there's no way that that's that. But how about number one is a Sab Blanc, Sab Blanc, um, grapes from Napa Valley. Number two, how about this one, Carmenere. Anyone get that right, Carmenere? That one's a tricky one. That's the grape, the lost grape, we call it. That was the French grape that was, uh, during World War II, ended up in Argentina and Chile. They thought it was extinct. Americans found it down there in the 90s, did some DNA testing and found out that it was the Carmenere grape. And now it's becoming big. That's 100% Carmenere. Uh, number three, the label kind of gives it away. If you're a customer of ours and you buy this, you know that that is the Clemente Cabernet. And we kind of went with this one just because that's the word that everybody loves and gravitates towards and everybody thinks that it's the best wine in the world and sometimes it is. But right now, spin those around in a circle and see that Carmenere is right on the coattail of that Cabernet. Those two were pretty similar. Um, so there they are, Sap Blanc, Carmenere, Cabernet. Um, three pretty good ones. And hopefully you guys are enjoying them, having some fun you know, have some snacks now and, and keep tasting and uh, have fun and thanks for supporting.